Hello everyone, it's Nim and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing rather something special and something very long. I'm sorry if you clicked on this video and you're like, is this girl really gonna talk for 45 minutes straight? Um, I don't know yet. We'll see how the voiceover is, um, is doing and if I'm done talking, we will just transfer her to some music. But for now, I'm gonna see how long I can talk, so... Um, Let's figure it out. So today we are building a vampire town. Basically, we're working up to October, working up to Halloween. I'm excited. I love spooky months. I love spooky builds. I love all spooky stuff, spooky movies, spooky books, spooky music. I love it. Spooky stuff, one of my favorites packs. Just all the ghost things, the pumpkins. I love it, man. I really love it. So today we are doing a shell challenge and this shell was made by uh, Sadie Sims. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, Sadie Sim builds. Mm. And I will make sure that I link her Twitter down below. So if you want to check out the shell challenge, you can do that. Her, all her uh, Twitter and the information I have is down below. Basically, she built this village with the terrain and everything. And it is a on a 40 by 30 lot. You aren't allowed to use uh, CC. Which is logical because, you know, obviously then she can't download it. And you have to turn it into something beautiful and it could be whatever you want. So my immediate vibes were... Um, actually, my first vibe was Vampire Town. I was like, okay, you know what? That might be a little bit obvious. Let's think of some other ideas. So I came up with a medieval um, idea. And I came up with some science fiction ideas. But I really love vampires. So... I went ahead and gone with the vampire idea. So we are building a vampire town. And obviously we are building this in Forgotten Hollow. And we are building it on the lot where actually the house from Vlad used to stand. But I demolished that and we are building this village. And this village does have... Um, like it shows credit to Vlad. We will place a statue of Vlad so the town can honor him. Because he's like this great vampire that comes into your home without you knowing it and without you wanting him there him being there so you know you gotta honor that <laughs> sims for vampires man i love vampires but to just randomly walk into your home and drink from your sims and i get it that's what vampires do but it's still annoying so anyways what you're allowed to do you're allowed to add to remove and edit fencing the roofing add windows and door obviously basically you're allowed to do whatever you want just don't add exterior walls and don't use uh, CC or change the terrain. Like I have to say, like um, you can win either a stuff pack or uh, a game pack. I really don't care much about the price because um, I already have all the packs. So it's not really for me that I want to win it. I mean, it would be nice, but like I don't, I don't need to get a price because I already have all the stuff back. So I may have broken some rules but you know what i'm completely fine with it because actually you can't use the red shelf i use the red shelf i mean i don't need to win anyways i just want to make a beautiful village you aren't also allowed to add pools i just read because obviously i didn't read the rules correctly because you know um who needs that who needs reading right apparently you're not allowed to add pools um i did add a pool because i wanted to make a pond so we're gonna have this little pond in a minute or so. I think I'm gonna create that. Uh, I did I break any other rules? Change foundation height. I didn't do that. I didn't change the wall height. Remove or add decks. Didn't do that. Remove or add exterior walls. Also didn't do that. So anyway, so if you want to also do the shell challenge, you have until the 1st of December. So you have like still two months. Yeah, still two months. So more than enough time. So don't worry about that. Like more than enough time. And actually like it having like this much time to build on a shell. On build on a shell. Um, actually, once I upload this to the gallery, I'm also gonna peek into all the other contestants and see what they build and get some inspiration. Maybe I really always like it. And like the thing is, I personally I think I'm like a pretty good builder. And then I go into the gallery and I look at all these other people that that. I have done the same shell challenge as I did. And then I just realized that I'm actually not that good at all. And I'm like, whoa, okay, I did not think of that. And I'm like, oh, yes, I could have done that as well. And sometimes people are just brilliant. I mean, the way that they add things, I'm just completely amazed. So 
that's probably gonna happen with this one as well. Like, I'm gonna think, ooh, I built this amazing vampire uh, town, this is so cool. And then someone comes along and did it like 10 times better. You know, <laughs> story of my life. Oh well. Anyways, like, um, first things first, landscaping. Obviously, whenever I build um, any house or do any kind of lot, I start with building shells, which obviously I didn't have to do now because the shells were already there. And then I start adding a lot of uh, terrain and obviously didn't need to do that as well. But then I added landscaping, so rocks, plants, trees, grass, like everything that should be placed outside. So we did that. But this time I did it a little bit different because I didn't want to get bored with this shell because it is quite it was not a very big shell but it has like all these different kinds of um, homes and levels and usually what i do is i decorate the outside of the home first completely and then i move into the inside and this um these shells i worked per shell so first i did this home downstairs and then i moved on to the shell in the next level and so forth and so forth so i basically worked my way up so the shell downstairs is going to be like very rundown um, vampire shell, like really rundown, full of cobwebs and everything. And then the shell above that is going to be a little bit more nice, like maybe a young vampire lives there, she hasn't been turned that long ago, you know, stuff like that. Then we are going to have this very fancy home, and then we're going to have like the tiny castle where the ma, well, the queen of the vampires is living. And she has a very sad story, but we're gonna. I'm gonna tell that story once we get actually to her shell and her home. First, we are still doing the outside because I wanted to do something spectacular. So I'm going in debug here and I'm using all these sort of plants to cover up most of the lots. And I actually think that it looks really spooky. And I didn't even use pumpkins in this build, but I actually think that it looks darn spooky. I mean, if I were to drive in the woods, which can't really do in my country because the woods aren't really that scary here but like if i were to be in i don't know england or sweden or ireland and i were to drive in the middle of nowhere and i would like come across this this village i would be spooked shitless man like honestly it would i would be so scared i mean the way that it looks especially at night time because we also add a lot of candles in the end it looks just really spooky and I have to say, I really, I love this shell. I like the way it looks, I like the way... I don't know, I just like the way it all looks. It looks really like a town, really medieval. I love it, and we're using all these pine trees. And also a lot of dead trees, because obviously we are building in Forgotten Hollow and we are building for vampires. So we're gonna need to have like something spooky and something that is more dead, as a matter of fact. And that sounds really grim and kind of creepy but i mean it in the best possible way so just trust me on that so right now we have added some fencing and we are going to change the fencing to a copper we have it white now but i didn't feel like that was completely the vibe because i was at this point i was still wondering should i go like scary vampire or scary town that is actually really happy and bright and i wasn't quite sure but in the end we are gonna go for scary also we are using the windows from get together and i found out that a little stone window that i actually wanted to use on this shell um it didn't work as a window for some odd reason and i had that some more i think it's maybe one of the mods that i've downloaded um it's causing for some bugs in my game because sometimes i place windows and they just disappear same with items sometimes they just disappear they're just randomly gone and I don't know why, I don't know if anyone else has had that happening, I don't really well, care for it that much, I mean, I care, I don't make it out of a big deal, so, you know, it's kind of what it is. Oh yeah, fun fact, I know that, like, uh, the rules were, like, you can add, remove, and edit the roofing. I didn't do that, I just made some of the parts a little bit longer, but that was it, I left the roofing completely the same, because, you know, I always think it's fun to work around with other people and see the way they think and how they are roofed it. I also really like the fact that this shell already has a roof because the roofing, that is what makes your uh, little town has character. 
among with other things obviously, but one of the most important things is roofing in my opinion. Roofing is so important and it, it just speaks volume in this, in this little village. It is just wow. Also, I may have been a little bit inspired by the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> I recently uh, started watching that and I'm very late to the game because it finished like four years ago or something. What? I don't even know. I think it has eight seasons, started in 2010, so it would have stopped in 2018. I think, I think that's correct. And I recently started watching it. I'm on season one now and I love it. So maybe that is also why I felt inspired to do this vampire build. I mean, who knows? <laughs> And then again, I've always loved monsters and vampires ever since I was a little girl. I watched my first uh, like scary movie or horror movie when I was five, I think, four or five. And it was this um, Dutch horror movie for children. And it was about this uh, town and there were two people and they time traveled back in time to, the, to that town. And then there was a werewolf and the werewolf would eat all the people. And it was really, really creepy. And luckily, like it is for obviously it was for children, but it was really scary. But there were luckily where there were some songs in between, so it was kind of like not really a musical, but like five or six songs in the whole movie. And it was really exciting. And I loved the fact that it was a werewolf. And I think that is where my love for the supernatural started. Or actually, I think I already had that love for the supernatural. But that is where it like became bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I'm kind of a supernatural freak. <laughs> I mean, freak in the best kind of the word, obviously. I mean, I love the supernatural and I know quite a lot about it. I mean, like, do I know? Yeah, I do. I know quite a lot about the supernatural. Obviously, um, I'm not one of those weird freakishly people that actually believes that I'm a vampire or whatever. You know, don't worry about that. But, you know. Since we are treading into Halloween and spooky October month, we are gonna spook it up a little bit on the channel and we're gonna see if we can build some creepy things in The Sims. You know, I just, I'm just curious. I think we can. So if you have any uh, ideas for creepy builds that we could do, do let me know in the comments down below and uh, I will see if I can do them like in October and I'm sure that we can. We are gonna do Spooktober. <laughs> Scary Tober. I'm not I have, to, I have to create a word for that. I think Spooktober is the official one. I think so. Maybe we could um, create some homes from The Walking Dead. So if I recreate just one of the. What if I recreate Willow Creek in like um, scary movie style? So every home will be like uh, based on a scary movie. Oh, that is brilliant. I need to, I'm gonna write this down. Hang on, just let me grab paper and pen and I'm just gonna write it down. Spooktober, that is a brilliant idea. Spooktober, uh, Willow Creek. I mean, you guys don't mind me writing this down while we do voiceover, right? I mean, it's, I still have to talk for half an hour, so this will be fine. Willow Creek, I will transform it into Scary movies. Built. Scary movies. Built. And then you have to think of like... Um, oh, could I build the sewers of it? So I think of it and obviously... Um, oh, what's it called with Jack Nicholson and The Shining? Maybe I could also build a home from Get Out. I mean, that would be amazing. And obviously Scary Movie itself. <laughs> I have enough inspiration for now. So if you have any more um, spooky movies, let me know and I will add them to the list. And this is going to be our October month. Ooh, I'm so excited. October starts, let's see. Ooh, it actually starts tomorrow. Ooh, so I need to have like a spooky build for next Monday. That will be fine. I wonder if I could build some scary things in Planet Zoo as well. Hmm, I'm not sure. We'll do it for The Sims anyways, so. Right now, we are decorating our first, like, vampire home. And while I was decorating this, I, like, sort of came up with the idea for what I wanted to do with it. So, this home is going to be a full vampiric home. 
It is gonna have um, all the vampiric furniture that we have, so like the mirror, the toilet. I forgot the sink, but I feel actually that this sink was more interesting and more, I don't know, like real life. We also put the ladder because there is an upstairs. So we put the ladder to the upstairs and on the upstairs floor, uh, we're actually gonna make this office. And we're also gonna use these hardwood floors. And I felt like that would just really like, um, I don't know, I don't want to say like Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I've ne never actually watched that. But it just felt like this home needed it, like old hardwood floors. And actually all the homes or all the shells on this lot have hardwood floors. And I just feel like that is really creepy and like vampire-like. If you walk in, you could like hear it squeaking and creaking wherever you walk. Especially this floor. This floor is from the spooky stuff and it looks so spooky and I love it. And then we are adding some cobwebs just to make it look like no one has been here in a very, very long time. Because this first place has been empty for such a long time, like years and years, if not centuries. Perhaps like 284 years old. Or 284 years ago that someone has been here they would let you think because obviously there is a computer so there has been someone here recently Ooh, maybe I could create I'm not gonna create a sims family because I don't really like create a sim but imagine this story in this home there is a, a sim and that is actually a vampire hunter so from this home he hunts all the vampires but what he doesn't know is that in the like the homes above him actually there are vampires living there that's a terrible story. Scrap that. That's an awful story. I mean, if you were a vampire hunter and you would literally hunt vampires for your living, you would know if someone is a vampire. Especially in Forgotten Hollow. I mean, it's not like we have uh, Twilight vampires that like sparkle when they go out in the sun. Or vampire diaries. Vampires. Was that a correct sentence? I don't even remember. That have to wear rings or otherwise you just burn. I do like the fact that in The Sims 4 the vampires can actually burn to death when they go outside so long. I once had a vampire and I was kind of bored of him, so I locked him outside. <laughs> it was really fun. Although in Forgotten Hollow I, they can just wander around because it's always misty. So I took him to Oasis Springs. You know, Oasis Springs, the desert full of sun. <laughs> and then he died there. It was really... Uh, I felt awful, but it actually was quite fun. And that sounds... Oh man, man, that makes me sound really mean. But, you know... Are you really a simmer if you haven't watched your sims die in horrible ways that you created? I mean, I remember in The Sims 2 when I would get annoyed with my sims, I would make them go swimming. And then I'd remove the ladder to the pool so that they couldn't actually, you know, get out. Spooky. Spooky stories for Spooktober. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? This build is just going to kick off Spooktober. That's it. This is our first build for, for the scary October month. This is going to be amazing. Oh, I love it already. I think we are almost about done with this home now. Like, we are just adding some normal chairs, some furniture. We are going to use Island Living for that and we are also going to use like some debug items but I didn't use as many debug items as I you know would have done otherwise it's quite a um, mellow build to be honest with a lot of um, just original items I do believe that in a minute we are going to add some like more gravestones and tombs on the outside and then the statue of flat but I can't remember if we did this now or if we are going to do that later at the end of the build. I'm not quite sure. Or maybe we've already done it while I was just talking to myself and not really paying attention to what happens on screen. You know, that is also a very, very likely possibility. I also like the fact that um, from all these homes, only two of them have like... Uh, yeah, only two of them have a, comp have a TV. And three of them have a computer. I don't think I gave... No, not all of them have computers. They're very limited in what they have. But then, of course, as a vampire, you don't need as many stuff. 
Or actually, maybe as a vampire you would need all the stuff because, you know, you're getting quite bored because you don't actually need to do anything because you don't need to work because you can't die, so. This conversation is like going nowhere. Okay, you know, guys, you know what? I am just going to cut off here and maybe... Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell you the story of the uh, countess that actually lives in the upper shell because I know otherwise I'm forgetting that so in the upper shell there used to be a countess and she was very rich and very wealthy and then she needed to get married so she got married to this beautiful foreign man but he had a secret he was a vampire see where I'm going with this Ooh, spooky right and um I, I just am trying to come up with the rest of the story because I'm like, I'm thinking of it right here on the spot. So, um, her, like, the wish of the Countess was always to have, like, children. But obviously him being a vampire, um, he can't procreate because, you know, vampires can't. So, um, unfortunately, like, she, they can't have children and she already had like a bassinet and everything set in, in stone and beautiful children's room decorated and everything and then came the bad news that it would never ever happen and you know she got very mad and then one night they got into a fight and he got so mad at her that he bit her and then she changed and now she's a vampire and she is doomed to eternal suffering because you know she killed her husband obviously because she's way stronger because she's like a newborn and um so she killed her husband and now she is doomed to live in eternity without children but she still has to like the nursery oh and maybe sometimes she wants to like steal babies from the village who knows it could all happen that is like a story that makes no sense wow I used to think that I was very good at making uh, stories up right on spot, but I don't think I'm that good at making up vampiric stories. I'm sorry. We are decorating this town now with a lot of um, like tombstones and those light posts. And there are also a couple of fallen down ones that we are just randomly placing to make it look like no one has been here in a very, very, very long time. And I have to say, I have never actually seen those light posts. Like, Maybe they're debug items, I'm not quite sure. But I've never actually knowingly seen them. And I actually think that they look very, very interesting and very cool. Even though they don't give that much light, so in the end I had to put some lanterns with it to make it look like there was more light. So we are now moving on to the second shell. And this shell I had in mind there was this little... Well, I say little, but I mean like a, a teenager or like... A young, young adult. Like maybe like 20, 21, 22, 23 or like under the 25. And she had like this amazing blood, right? So all the vampires would want to bite her and then one day someone did and then they changed her. And now she is doomed to live out her life and she actually never even wanted to be a vampire. She wanted to uh, move to Solani and be like a master surfer and you know, windsurf competitions and stuff like that, but now she can't, and now she's doomed to live here in this tiny village until all eternity. Ooh, spooky. Also, I don't know if that's like a uh, debug item or not, but those Google glasses that came into university, have they always been there, or did I just already knew, or did I just never ever see them? Because I never knowingly seen them like ever in my life it was that i was looking at the computers and i was like hmm computer glasses what's this so apparently they're like uh, google glasses and i actually feel like that's very awesome i did have like the most trouble with furnishing this shell because it's so tiny i feel like it's um like the tiny home i don't think like it's under 32 tiles i think it's um like 64 tile like uh, somewhere around that and I know that they're still an upstairs and I chose to ignore that there's a tower on this home 
Because, you know, you don't want to decorate a tower and then you need to put, like, stairs. And stairs wouldn't fit, so you need to put a ladder. And then the space upstairs would be so tiny, like, what are you even going to put there? So I decided to just ignore that and the tower is just for decorational purpose only. I also like this build is fully functional, even though it may look like it's not, it is functional. You can sit in the bed, you can sleep in the bed, you can use the chair, it's fine. It's very tight, but it's, it is play tested and on my game it worked, so it should work on your game as well. And this, well, shell or home from Pyrocomb is almost done as well, we're just adding some, uh, a bookcase obviously, which by the way, I don't think your sims can use. I didn't playtest that, but I don't think your sims can use that. But there are enough book uh, shelves in the other homes. And then we are just adding some curtains. And I believe we're adding some paintings of wine. And then um, we are using the one with the wine in the glass and then the wine splatting out. And I actually, I had in mind like, uh, oh, imagine this was blood. Ooh, spooky picture of blood on the wall. You know, since it is spooktober. So I actually thought I was pretty clever of myself, even if I say so myself. No, sorry, just grabbing a drink because, you know, I've been talking for almost half an hour and my voice is straining. I know it's still my voice and I'm used to talking a lot, but whoa, I am talking a lot. Hmm. Ah, here's something I haven't told yet. Which is difficult because my voice, uh, or like my mouth, never actually stands still. I can talk like 24-7. That's like one of the plus sides of um, being my friends. I talk 24-7. So if you don't have anything to talk about, don't worry. I will fill up the awkward spaces and silences. The downside is I never stop talking. So if you want to say something, you have to find a way to get in there. Because, you know, I just continue talking and talking and talking the entire day. I have made an Instagram for my for my YouTube channel, and so it's dedicated to The Sims. And um, I will link it down below. It's called um, Nimi underscore Sims, and I will be posting my builds on there with more in-depth pictures, some fun facts about the build and stuff like that. So you can keep um, like follow that and keep updated with what I'm doing. You will get some sneak previews to the builds that I'm doing so if you're into that make sure you click on the link down below I'll make sure it's linked so you then you have my uh, personal Instagram that you can follow and my sims Instagram and you know I post more on my sims Instagram than my personal Instagram because I don't really have that much of an interesting life to post online really that's depressing isn't it oh well <laughs> Let's continue with the build. Let's not uh, go digging in that hole for too long. This home is uh, supposed to be like the sister of the countess that lives here, or like the most important townies that aren't like the countess herself. So they have like this really fancy home. They're also the ones that have a fireplace. They are the ones that have like the fancy furniture. And they have like uh, actual two stories home. So they have like the ground floor and then the one up above. And that's actually where their bedroom is. And like a closet and mirrors and stuff like that. And I was wondering if I should put like stairs in here or a ladder. And then I tried stairs and then I realized, um, oh yes, these shelves are built on the diagonal. So you can't actually put ladders in here. Because it wouldn't fit with the way the upstairs is laid out. Or your stairs would be in a very, very, very unfortunate place. And you know... We're just not going to do that, so we are placing ladders. And then I wanted to go for interior-wise a little bit of an old uh, place. Just a little bit old, not very old, just a little bit. So we're using those old cats and dog um, couches, the old fireplace. And we are going to put a woodwork bench in here, just because I feel like the sims that lived here, like they're happy they're a vampire, and they excel into woodworking. So. They create all the tables and all the furniture basically for the entire village. And that's just what they do the entire day. They just craft and carve wood. I mean, what else is there to do when you're dead? I mean, if you were a vampire, 
what would you be doing all day, okay? Comment down below. If you were a vampire, what would you be, be doing? If I was a vampire, I would probably game all day. Oh, that's not true. If I were a vampire, I would probably make some uh, very creepy clothing, like um, Adam's Family clothes. Ooh, Adam's Family. I could build the Adam's Family home as well next week. Let me write that down. Anyways, I would probably um, make some very creepy clothing, because I create my own clothing. And I'm now working on a uh, study where I actually learn to design it, so not just buy a pattern, make it, but actually learn how to design the pattern yourself. And it's really quite interesting. And also quite difficult because it has like math in there and I'm not really that good at math. But you know, I'm learning and I'm really excited and actually think like it's pretty fun to do. So in a few months, maybe a year, I can like design my complete own patterns and maybe I could even sell them and make some money. I could create a pattern for the outfit that Bob Pancakes is wearing. I mean, how amazing would that be? As we all know that Bob Pancakes is like my favorite sim ever. <laughs> poor Bob Pancakes, married to Eliza. Man, poor, poor Bob. Even though, like, if you read the description, it says, oh no, poor Bob and Eliza, and when you actually go into the household, they're happily married, so... Sims team, what went wrong there? We are adding some uh, skill build item as well here, so we're adding this chest table, because I felt like, you know, um, vampires are often seen as really smart creatures, so... Chess! That, that's where my mind went. We also have this little barbecue place where, like, the town could come together and barbecue together and I actually thought that was a really nice idea and a nice gesture of them to actually do stuff together. So not just live in solitude and be confined to their own place but actually do stuff together and work together. Now here I was thinking should I add a coffin in here or not because it is the head vampire that lives here, she's the countess, but I just decided against it. For basically just one reason, um, it didn't look very nice and it didn't fit correctly. So we are having this giant bed and then some uh, vampire furniture. And then in the corner over there, we are actually first placing a desk and then in the other corner, we are actually going to build a nursery room, what I told you guys about. So her hope for children, she still has it, but it will never come true, unfortunately, which actually is very sad. And that that's why like she lives here and she has this town she actually sees the vampires that live in the town like as her own children so the teenager that lives in the home like two stories below she actually sees her as her child and she tries to raise her and obviously that being a teenager that didn't want to be trans uh, like changed into a vampire so she she's kind of bitter about it I like to think, oh, I'm gonna praise myself for building this, but what I really liked about this is that I like added cobwebs and everything in here and add like stuffed animals in the little crypts to make it look like she had it all figured out and all ready because she really wanted twins and twins to run in her family, so she was all prepared for that. And now she could just never ever use it, so it's just the room is filled with cobwebs. And no, she leaves it there just to remind her of the life that she unfortunately could never have. There are already some toys on the floor. It's actually a really sad story. Like really, really sad when you think about it. But you know, it's in Forgotten Hollow. That's where sad stories are allowed to be. Forgotten Hollow is kind of the depressing uh, town really and world. I did like that I added those spooky paint, uh, like wall paints, because <laughs> it brought some uh, lightheartedness to the to the entire story. Because it was a pretty dark and depressing story, but then with a spooky wallpaper, I actually think that it made it look a little bit um, less depressing. Even though you know it, it is still kind of depressing. And here we are just adding the bathroom, and this is the only bathroom in the home. Downstairs we don't have a bathroom, so if you have guests over, they needed to come upstairs. And then we would also um, always see like the crypts, and they would know how awful and hard her life has been, so they would respect her more as the head vampire. At least, you know, that was the idea that I had. I don't know if it really worked out like that, but that was the idea, so you know, let's, um, let's just run by that. 
I did add flooring, right? Yeah, I add flooring. I add tiles in this in this bathroom because you know she is the head vampire, so she deserves some um, amazing tiles and hardwood floors. And this is like the the vampire floors, and they are always diagonal. And when you build on a diagonal, they actually become straight. So it was really weird. I was looking at it like mm, this is weird. They're straight. They should be diagonal. But you know what? It is what it is. And I wanted to do something different for the kitchen here, so instead of using a lot of counters I actually went and used two of those um, tables, I think, yeah, side tables. And I actually think that it worked out pretty good for this uh, vampire home. Because obviously, um, technically vampires don't need to eat. I think in The Sims they do. I've actually played with vampires in a very, very, very long time. So. Technically, vampires don't need to eat if you look at all the lore and stuff. I mean, they need to feed on blood, but they don't actually need to cook. So that's why I thought having this giant kitchen would be pretty unrealistic. So this is just for guests. So if she has, like, human guests coming over, then this would be there, you know. Stuff like that. Hence the side tables and not actually the ridiculous amount of counters that I normally would place in a kitchen. And that's also the reason why it isn't that cluttered, because, you know, she isn't using this that frequently, so she doesn't need a lot of stuff in it. Oh, and I actually quite like how it turned out, and then we are also adding a dining table in here. And it is going to be placed uh, diagonally in the end, because I just felt like, you know, that was the vibe, and it just felt right, as a matter of uh, saying, as a matter of speaking. And, you know, we are going to add some decorations, so we are going to add the painting of um, Nostradamus, I think it is. It is actually... Um, that poster always reminds me of the movie uh, Nostradamus. Or Nostradafu, I don't know, like the very old, very first vampire movie with a guy. that kind of looks like Uncle Fester that is um, just opening a door and then he's very... Yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it, just Google it, it's very famous. Actually, um, I went with my parents when I was in Munich, I think. I went to the uh, Monster Museum and it was so interesting. They had like this very old um, horror movie, well, horror movies, like for that age, at that time it was very horror-like. It was just like uh, vampires and then you would see like the bats on the string and then the people screaming and running and old zombie movies. And I actually really, really like it because I'm, like I said before, I'm really into the supernatural and all those creatures, that are, they really have my interest. So it was very nice for me to go to a museum where everything is like that, so just exciting. Here we are adding a little seating, uh, like seating area with this little bar, and I felt like this glow bar was actually pretty darn fancy, so it needed to be in there. And we're adding some plants because you know, it was actually quite a large space. I didn't expect it when I first downloaded this shell. I was like, hmm, they're all very tiny, yet yeah, it's fine. And then when you actually start furnishing this top one, it has such a weird layout that the floor plan is really difficult to like work out. So I cut this bit in like half so we have a kitchen with two closed doors and actually I wanted to have like an office there but then there wasn't anywhere to put the kitchen so you know it is what it is. And this was actually really difficult to furnish especially um, when I was thinking hmm wall decorations what could fit here what do I want it was all rather difficult actually. But in the end, I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. And with all the paintings and the couches that we are adding. I'm also very sorry if you can hear me coughing or like hmm, scraping my throat because my voice, man. I have been talking non-stop for almost 40 minutes now. I didn't think I could do it, but you know, I can. Quite proud of myself, to be honest. And right now we are decorating uh, the... the like the coffee table with some books to look like to make it look like people are actually well people vampires are actually living in here and they are using the stuff that is in here so we're adding like some glasses and straws where they would like suck up the blood like through the straw I actually think that's always pretty funny and I believe we are now just editing edit, editing 
Whoa, the finishing touch is outside, so we are adding some lanterns. And I think these lanterns are actually either from Seasons or the Vampire Pack as well, but I'm not quite sure, to be honest. And we're adding them, like, randomly around the pathway, just to make uh, it so, like, it's actually really nice lit. So you get this really spooky vibe, and then every home gets their own mailbox. And downstairs, we're gonna add this little paper, uh, yeah, like, paper thing so that the town can read into the events of the world and I think we are almost about done we are gonna add some flowers and we are gonna add some green to the to the side of this li tiny little castle just to make sure like it looks the same in the back as in the front because in the front we also had those plants hanging there from jungle adventure and we are gonna do that in the back as well so guys, if you stick with me for this entire 45 minute voiceover, congrats to you, like you've made it, I've made it, I'm quite proud of myself, I'm proud of you guys as well, you've made it through this video, huzzah, good job guys. So if you've made it all the way through this video and you haven't yet subscribed, um, what's wrong with you? I mean, there's a big giant subscribe button right there, click it. It, it will keep you updated and will keep you updated through the entire month of October where we build spooky items. I am excited for it. I hope you guys are just as excited for it as I am. So if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. You could also share this video with your friends, of course, so that they could enjoy the content as well. And I will hope to see you guys on Friday where we are posting for Planet Zoo and the next Sims video will be next Monday. Bye, guys.